Hello there, Kansas City, and welcome to the Kansas City Public Library section of Virtual Museums Day KC. My name is Matt Reeves. I'm an education and outreach librarian at the Missouri Valley Special Collections. Today, I'm thrilled to share with you two resources that we've created that we hope will educate, entertain, and comfort during these difficult times. What are those two resources? Why, there are coloring Kansas City coloring books. Or, as I like to put it, today will be about coloring Kansas City, how to learn a little bit about local history and make something awesome to put on the fridge. I'll be joined later today by Joanna Marsh, the Special Collections Librarian, Illustrator, Researcher, and Archivist behind the Coloring Kansas City Coloring Book Series. She's going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at how we created those materials. But before we get to Joanna's piece, let's go online and show you where you can download and print these coloring books. Browse over to kchistory.org. And once you're at KansasCityHistory.org, go down to the KC History Spotlight. Double-click, and you'll be able to access both of our coloring books. The first book, Women Who Made History in Kansas City, and the second, The 19th Amendment Centennial. Double-clicking on either of these books will take you down to a document viewer where you can view, download, and print the coloring book for yourself. Now that you know where to find the coloring books, let's meet Joanna Marsh, the librarian, researcher, archivist, and illustrator behind the coloring book series. Hi, I'm Joanna Marsh, and I'm an archivist and special collections librarian at the Kansas City Public Library. I work in the library's local history department, which is the Missouri Valley Special Collections, and our mission is to preserve our area's heritage and provide meaningful access to our collections. A little bit about me, I have a master's degree in library science with a concentration in archive studies. And as an undergraduate, I studied humanities and minored in art, which is one reason I became interested in doing a coloring book for our department. Interesting. Beyond your art background in college, did you have any history with coloring before that? So as a child, I loved to color. I spent hours and hours coloring and um, continued that habit through high school and college, and even as an adult, would occasionally break out a coloring book. Um, at a young age, I realized that I could create textures and depth and dimension even on a coloring page, um, so I kind of honed my artistic skills. Um, so it was a great pastime for me, and I always kind of wanted to illustrate my own coloring book. And the years before this project, I saw kind of a surge in the popularity of coloring for adults as stress relieving activity. Um, so it really is something that I, I feel like all ages can enjoy. I'm curious, what led you to combine your interest in art and your job in the special collections at the Kansas City Public Library? So the idea for our first coloring Kansas City book was inspired by the New York Academy of Medicine Library which had started a program called Color Art Collections, where different institutions were invited to take a collection item, say like a botanical illustration or, or something that could be converted into a coloring page, and they could submit it to this program and um, you could color different things from different institutions and libraries. So how did it go when you started implementing that idea at the Kansas City Public Library? So as a department, we really liked this idea and we wanted to participate uh, but we kind of had trouble finding items that we could convert into coloring pages. Um, so because of my art background and my love of coloring, I um, thought, hey, I could do my own illustrations of the things that I would personally want to color. And the first thing that came to mind were these amazing Kansas City women that I had learned about while fielding reference requests in the Missouri Valley Room. And once you decided to focus on women in Kansas City, how did you decide which women to focus on of all the people that impacted our history. So once I had the idea, I did a couple of sketches and shared them with my colleagues and got a very enthusiastic response and the go ahead to do more. And together we compiled a list of many women from Kansas City who could be included. Unfortunately, we only had a certain number of pages, so we had to narrow it down. And we had specific criteria to do that. We wanted to make sure these were women who were from Kansas City or had lived here for a significant amount of time and contributed to local history. 
Uh, we needed to make sure we had enough resources in our special collections to work from to write the biographies that would go into the coloring book, as well as resources to point researchers back to should they want to do more research, which was the goal to inspire people to do more research. Um, and we also needed to make sure we had a source image to work with. I'm not very good about drawing from my brain. I need something to actually look at and draw from in order to do the illustrations. So we needed to have a photograph or a portrait of the person. Can you share a story from the book? One of the first people I thought of to put into the book was Lyda Conley, who was a member of the Wyandotte Nation and said to be the first Native woman to argue a case before the Supreme Court. Uh, she was a lawyer. And um, I heard about her because a researcher came in and asked for resources about her. Um, so once I started reading about her, I just was fascinated by her story and thought she'd be a great person to feature. That brings up another question. How did you research and find the real histories of these women who are in your books? You'll see on the coloring pages that each one includes a biography. And a lot of research went into these, even though they're pretty brief. Um, we used a lot of our own resources in the Missouri Valley Room to write them, things like our local history books, a lot of primary resources like newspaper articles and archival records, especially women's club records. In our second edition of the coloring book, which is about the 19th Amendment Centennial, a lot of the women featured in the book were members of the Kansas City Athenaeum, so we used our own Athenaeum club records in our collections to help write the biographies. Can you describe, from start to finish, how you'd create one of these illustrations for the coloring book? My process for doing the illustrations involved multiple steps. Um, first, I would put the source image up on my computer and do a few just trace markings to make sure that I was getting the proportions correct. Um, then I would do a freehand sketch and then take that sketch and distill it down into a line drawing and then go over the line drawing in pen and ink. Uh, from there, I would scan it in and send it to our very talented art director, Andy Dandino, who would then spruce it up, make it look really good, and he did all the graphic design elements that you'll see in the book. It was a really fun process, and um, you know, drawing and coloring, that's not something I normally do at work. As an archivist, I'm usually processing our special collections, um, helping researchers, that kind of thing. So it was really fun to bring a more artistic element into my job and approach local history in a different way. What was the most challenging part of drawing the illustrations for these books? Even though um, drawing was very enjoyable, it was also a challenge for me because I was out of practice at the time. I hadn't done any drawing for probably several years. Um, and you know, the drawings are not quite as good as they would have been, say, when I was in college studying art, um, but that's okay. I did my best, and I think it worked out. I'd say that it more than worked out. These books are great. What's your favorite thing to draw? My favorite thing to draw are probably faces. I like drawing hair and clothes. Uh, hands, not so much, but you might notice a couple of those are not so great. Um, but, you know, you do what you can. Well, and what you could do was really excellent. Besides, in this case, you're drawing historical figures. It's not like they're modeling in front of you, right? You can't just ask them to shift if you need to see a different view. There are several times where the photos that I had to work from were not great quality, and I really couldn't see what something would look like. Um, and I'm not great from drawing from imagination. So if there's something a little off on the drawings, that's probably why. To shift gears a little bit, what were some of the challenges that you encountered when you were researching the subjects for these books? Sometimes it was difficult to find adequate resources to write the biographies and get a fuller picture of the women we wanted to include. This was especially the case with the African American community in the early 20th century. Unfortunately, there was just not very much documentation for women especially. Um, so that made it more difficult to find information on people like Ida Bowman Bex, who we featured in our 19th Amendment Centennial Coloring Book. She was a really remarkable woman, a renowned lecturer and suffragist. She helped found the Kansas City Urban League, 
as well as the Yates YWCA, which was named after Josephine Yates, who happens to be featured in our first coloring book. So how did you find enough information about Miss Bex to put her in the book? Fortunately, my colleague Kara Flynn um, had heard about Ida Bex through a brief mention in a book that we have in the Missouri Valley Room. So we were able to um, find a few more resources on her and write the biography. And I'm really glad that we could put her in the coloring book and introduce her to more people um, and show the impact that she had on the Kansas City community. Can you tell us a couple of more stories about women from these books and the impact they had on Kansas City? One of my favorite stories that I came across while researching for the coloring book was about Opal Hill, who was a professional golfer. Um, I had never heard of her before, but the story goes that she had a career as a nurse um, and contracted a severe kidney infection and her doctor prescribed fresh air and exercise. So she took up golf relatively late in life and ended up turning pro in her early 30s which is pretty impressive to me. Um, she was supposed to be the third American woman to turn pro, and she won medals in the US Open, had a pretty remarkable career. Um, after she retired, she kept teaching golf lessons well into her 80s. Um, so she is just kind of a fun Kansas City woman that I'm really glad we could include in the book. That is remarkable, that a physician's suggestion would lead to a woman discovering a latent talent. Almost sounds a little bit like a certain archivist that I know who tapped into a latent talent for art to help illustrate a coloring book series about Kansas City history. What other stories would you like to share? Sarah Chandler Coates was another woman I really enjoyed researching for the coloring book. Um, she moved from Pennsylvania to Kansas City in 1856 and did so much for the city in its early stages. Um, she was a huge promoter of the arts and sciences. She established women's clubs. She was an abolitionist. She ran charities out of her home. And she was arguably Kansas City's first suffragist and founded the Equal Suffrage Association. Uh, she was also a personal friend of Susan B. Anthony's. And I just really enjoyed reading about her and her kind of progressive spirit that she had. Well, Joanna, thanks so much for sharing those stories about researching and writing color in Kansas City. As you think about people out there downloading this book and coloring in the stories and reading the lessons from the women who shaped Kansas City history, um, how do you hope that they'll feel or what do you hope they'll take away from this book series that you've created? So I hope when people read the book and color its pages that they'll be inspired by these women who are, after all, from right here in Kansas City. A lot of them went through really challenging times, and yet they were able to accomplish so much and do so much good for themselves and those around them. And I think now is the perfect time to be reminded of that. So I hope the coloring book can provide some relaxation and joy during this very strange time we're in, and also maybe even spark a deeper interest in local history. And you know, Joanna, if someone did develop an interest in local history, they could find thousands of digitized materials at kchistory.org. On behalf of the Kansas City Public Library, I want to thank you for watching our portion of Virtual Museum Day KC. We're looking forward to a time when we can welcome you back to the library and to the Missouri Valley Special Collections. Until that time, know that we're here for you, digitally, if not in person. You can visit us at kchistory.org and reach out to us at lhistory at kclibrary.org. The Kansas City Public Library, the Missouri Valley Special Collections, and kchistory.org, where history is just one click away.